San Francisco's mayor recently argued that it's easier to access drugs than treatment. Facing the worst drug crisis in the city's history, the mayor has said no more handouts without mandatory treatment. ABC 7 News reporter Liam Melendez is here to tell us that in reality, mm. it can really be challenging to offer treatment mm. without the necessary right. staff and beds. Yeah, where's the staff? Yeah. You know, and, and we need more beds and they're not being filled really. And, and they're so very necessary. We need that treatment because when it comes to the drugs that are out on the streets, Fentanyl is perhaps the hardest one to get off. Now, two weeks ago, the mayor said that 80 people were approached and asked if they wanted treatment on demand, and only one person said yes. Is that all right? Is that all right? It's noon in the Tenderloin. San Francisco police do a wellness check of this couple, apparently unresponsive. A young man finally emerges, but there's concern that his partner may need help. Paper. Police eventually leave after she refuses to request assistance from a street crisis team. For years, treatment for drug users and those needing mental health care has been the focus of conversation among city officials. Our goal, as I said, is consistently to get people into treatment and support that they need. Let's focus on first recovery. And they're the ones who are most at risk for fatal overdoses. We should be doing everything we can. Except that where are they planning to house all these people who need treatment? And how is the city able to afford the care that they need? This is the Harbor Light Withdrawal Management Program. There's a total of 40 beds. Of the 40 beds, 10 are funded by the San Francisco Health Department and five by the Adult Probation Department. Their community partners sponsor another five. That leaves 20 empty beds. So you're saying that there are 40 beds here and the health department funds only 10 when they could be funding more? Correct. We have. Why don't they? It's a good question. Um, the same question that Supervisor Catherine Stephanie asked the health department during a recent hearing. And I'm just wondering, I know that there's 20 uncontracted withdrawal management beds at Harbor Light and wondering if DPH has considered purchasing those. I think we're looking at multiple options, uh, including that. According to Harbor Light, if the health department were to fund those 20 extra beds, there would also be extra revenue to hire more staff to meet the demand for care, kind of like the chicken and the egg. As of today, those 20 beds are not being used. It's a citywide problem. Not enough of the right kind of places for people, um, and then not enough of the right kind of staff to staff those places. I think we should definitely fund um, the beds at Harbor Light. There's definitely a need for it. When you look at our overdose death rates, they're just getting worse. On the other hand, the health department has invested in the only substance use sobering center in San Francisco called Soma Rise. Coincidentally, the number of beds available there is 20. Soma Rise is operated by the nonprofit Health Right 360 with a $7.4 million budget over two years, which means that each bed, whether occupied or not, ends up costing $506 a day. Harbor Light points out that each bed in their withdrawal management program operated by the Salvation Army costs the city $110 a day. They work hand in hand. But they're not the same. The health department has a point. Harbor Light takes in people who have already made the decision to get clean, and they support them through that rough period. While Soma Rise only serves people who are using drugs the moment they walk through that door. So let's be clear, they are not here to seek treatment. Some folks come in to seek treatment, but I will tell you, because this is such a low barrier program, most folks that are coming here initially are just looking for a safe place to rest, to sort of stabilize from their drug use, take a break, a pause in their day, their routine. We were invited inside, but with the condition that we not take any video of the patients, something we would never do. Instead, they provided us with some of their photos. At Soma Rise, a medical technician is there to make an initial health assessment. They are then fed, offered a warm shower, and a chance to sleep it off while being monitored in case of a possible overdose. Patients are only allowed to stay for 24 hours. At that point, they can ask for help to get into treatment. Otherwise, they are back on the streets. Nothing is mandated. 
and nothing comes with conditions. So make the argument, if you did not exist, what would happen to the people who are using drugs out here? Well, they'd, they'd be in isolation in alleyways, they'd be on the streets, they'd be on the sidewalks, and they'd be in crisis from their substance use. The health department also makes the argument that the cost per bed is much lower than if they were to end up in the emergency room. We know emergency rooms are extremely expensive and um, makes it difficult for other people to access care. They say from January to June of this year, they have referred 250 patients to a withdrawal management treatment program and 90 people to off-site residential treatment centers. Meanwhile, Harbor Light allows patients to transition from the withdrawal management program to residential treatment right there on site. So they can literally show up to our door, ring the bell, come into our withdrawal management program, stabilize for a couple of days, and then transition into long-term care at our residential treatment program on this campus. There we were invited to meet Zach Wolf, a recovering fentanyl addict who says he was once ready to take his own life. I went out and stole a bunch of stuff from a store, and I was going to use that to fund the money to overdose and kill myself. As I'm going to sell my stuff, I get arrested because I had, I had a warrant for missing court. And I kind of see that as divine intervention. And God was doing for me what I couldn't do for myself, which was put the drugs down. He's been sober for nine months. Another outspoken supporter of so-called mandated treatment is Tom Wolf. I was already in jail facing accountability for the crimes that I was committing, and then I was given an option to go to treatment as a way to get out of jail. What's it going to take in San Francisco for this not to exist? That's a good question. I don't have an answer for that. Only because I, I have done so many tours here. I've seen the data. I, I think... Um, we've got a big problem. We've got a huge problem. In fact, I, I would ask, what's it going to take for San Francisco to continue opening more of these programs? Hmm. Now, keep in mind that San Francisco is currently spending $650 million a year to fund these health programs, which include substance use and addiction. This has to be the most challenging moment For in San sure. Francisco. I mean, these drugs are After so pervasive. After spending two days out there. And we're spending a fortune, and it's mm -hmm. still a terrible problem, yeah. and there's no end in sight. Great Absolutely. report. Thank, Thank you. you.